Hello, Dave Burns here at Copper Gardens. I'm going to do a promised how-to today about tapering copper tubing. Um, several have asked, in fact, over the years, many, many have asked, how do we do that? And I've gotten all kinds of most interesting guesses. This is my second attempt at it. The first one took me 15 minutes and I didn't have the camera aimed well. And I'm sorry to say that that was A, too long, and B, we got to get aimed right. But because I'm carrying it on my head, and that's that's problematic at best. The object being the, of all of this idea is to be able to finish a tube with a nice point. It doesn't have to be as fine as these. That you could vary that a lot. That'll that'll be your own judgment as to. And any size tubing. This, the, I'm going to show you today on half inch, but it applies universally across the board to all sizes. Here's a nice nice taper. If you want to do a lot of bending after it's tapered and finished and cleaned and polished, you really do almost have to TIG weld it. This is TIG welded and it allows me to get that nice finish and nice bending. I can bend brazed material. This, these are all brazed and it bends to some degree, but the brazing is more brittle than the copper. So it's going to resist and kind of makes a crackling protestation as you're trying to bend it. You can bend it every once in a while. I go too far and I have to reheat it to get the uh, crackled uh, uh, brazing to flow back together nicely. Okay, the really short version here, if I can possibly do this short, start with your piece. Of, this is just a re-salvage piece of plumbing that I got from a friend of mine. Actually, a customer of mine. Traded it in to me, of all things. And so you can just, just to show you, you can start with anything. We polish it down. I took off some of the old uh, solder. And this is another one of the same. And then I did this taper cut. And I do that, I want to emphasize, I do that on a bandsaw. Why? It's just the best. There are other saws you could use. You could use a hand uh, um, cutoff tool like the one I'm about to show you. In fact, we're going to use it here in a little bit. This is a great tool. I wouldn't tell you not to do it, but I think that the bandsaw is by far and away the best choice. The really critical part, here's the thing I need you to understand more than anything else. I learned this the hard way many years ago. There's a piece of tubing. Start from the end, so I call it the zero point, and I come up a bit abruptly, and then I gradually make my taper back to some point. Well, let's say we're already there. We're going to cut this off. Now, I want you to bring the last part of this taper up very, very, very gently. Do not do this. That will give you a ski jump every time when you try to fold the copper back together and make a nice finished piece. Don't do it. Come up as gently as possible and then finish this point. I'll show you how in just a minute. This is key. More important than almost anything else I can tell you today. Don't do this. Always go in a convex curve. not uh, Yeah, convex, I'm sorry. Not a concave curve on the tubing. That simply makes a better cut. If you do it wrong, you'll quickly understand why that's true. Now, once that cut is made, it's going to look about like this. And when you exit the, the saw, you are always going to have a little bit of a, a bump here. A it's the wrong term. I don't know what to call this. It's ugly. Look at this. This is what you want. And this is how it's going to come out of the saw. Every time. It's unavoidable. To get to this point, that's where this little tool comes in. Take this piece, it's got this nasty little ski jump habitat here. Put the back side of the cutter head up against the back side or the opening edge of your cut and let it flow, let it flow. Cut, 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 up to the point that you come out at zero, zero point where you can't get any thinner because, and by the way, use the cheapest, thinnest three inch cutoff wheels you can buy. Cheaper is better because they're thinner cheap Chinese junk. It's the one time that cheap Chinese junk is actually to your benefit. Sorry to all my Chinese friends, but you make crap. It's just a shame, but that's what you do. When you're done, you're going to braise it. And I say braise it as opposed to TIG welding it, because 99% of you are not going to have a TIG welder in your back pocket. So we braise it with Harris Zero. The nomenclature, let's see if we can get this in good light and you can read it. I'm going to hold still here. The key is Harris Zero, 050 by 1 8 inch. It's a flat stick. Um, some of these other heat numbers are not critical as far as buying it. You can buy it in one pound tubes. I buy it in 25 pound boxes. 
it's the stuff to use. The only trick about it is it's going to be harder than the copper. So when you begin to grind it off, and you always have to grind it, there is no way to get a nice smooth finish. There just isn't. So get over it and get used to having lumpy finishes once you are uh, fully brazed up. Start with a grinding wheel uh, of this sort on a four and a half inch grinder. Take it down. Sorry, I didn't really mean to do that. Take it down until you begin to have all uh, uh, feathered edges, but not finished. Then take the next step. I like to use my little um, two inch air powered grinders with a um, uh, non-woven finishing pan surface conditioning disc. I use the type R Rolock. I get them from Enco. Uh, and they're just the best. Enco Online has about the press prices you're going to find. If you go downtown, they're going to be a dollar fifty, dollar seventy nine a piece. Get them from Enco, buy them by fifty to the box, and you get them down to about uh, fifty nine cents or so, almost uh, a third of what you're paying uptown. Uh, then finally, I go to this uh, other finishing uh, disc from Griton, uh, surface preparation disc, and fine maroon is the fine. And it just gives you an absolutely wonderful finish. How you finish it is less important to me in showing you what we do than simply cutting it. Getting this cut, getting that finished V groove, and then hammering it over. Hammering it is relatively straightforward, but let me tell you a couple of things quickly here. When you are hammering it, hammering it turn it back and forth so that you don't get a biased twist. Uh, in the piece so you'll keep that seam running straight along the way and that way you can to whatever degree you can hide it if you want to you can put it to the back of the B side if you will of whatever your piece is if you're going to see it well then that's just the way it is you want that line to be as fine as possible or you want to TIG weld it so once that's done all the way down to a nice tight finish I can actually do this pretty quickly here There you go. You're ready to braise. Keep it, keep it as round as you can, but don't worry if it's a little twiggly. Of course, my stuff is mostly botanical themed anyway, so a little bit of irregularity actually works pretty well. This little gap right here, you could fight it a little if you wanted to and tighten it up a little. I just fill it with uh, brazing, and that allows me to turn it and spin it in, in, the, in the grinder and finish a nice uh, rounded point, if you wish. So that is the essence of it. Now, I want to tell you one other thing. I made this instant list here. You start by cutting it at the zero point, do a convex cut, come out of it slowly, trim the notch, anneal it, heat it up so that you can bend it, uh, compress it back together nicely, hammer it, braze it, never cold solder. Don't use your plumber solder. You have to braze it. TIG is ideal, but not necessary. Now, the point of all of this is, here's your first seven items. The last item is grind, clean, and color. The first seven items are half of your time. Grind, clean, and color is the other half. Don't expect this to go fast. It goes really slow, especially the grinding, cleaning, and coloring. Grinding is smooth, getting a good matching finish, and then whatever color you choose to do, well, of course, the color's up to you, but just expect to take a lot of time on grinding it to get a nice finish. Don't forget that the brazing is harder. This type O, type zero, is about, I don't know the numbers, it's probably twice as hard as the copper. So be careful. You're going to find that you can easily grind through the copper while the brazing material is resisting you. So be cautious about that differential. i got to stop now or I'm going to run too long. If you have questions, I'll try to answer them. Hopefully this helps to some of you that have been looking for this. Uh, if I didn't refine it enough, let me know. I'll see if I can help you out. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.